Well, okay, so this one, Vengeance is Mine, this I saw first on um, Laserdisc. So that's okay. going back uh, quite a long time ago. This is a great, very long um, sort of serial killer movie, um, but um, really striking and uh, very entertaining and one I strongly recommend. And this, uh, this is Drunken Angel, this is Kurosawa. This is an early Kurosawa um, with Toshiro Mifune. We used music from this in, uh, in our movie, um, Isle of Dogs, and it's very beautiful. It's a, a, you know, it's a movie that's sort of set in a um, poor neighborhood, but it's all on a set, um, and this doctor who's like a saint, and then um, Toshiro Mifune is his patient. He's the drunken angel. Simon of the Desert. You know, I read somewhere Mike Nichols saying that when he was working, he would think of Bunuel essentially every day because he felt like Bunuel had the greatest recipe. Whatever situation he was in, he could just go to his imagination for a solution. He could go any direction he wanted. And so his movies, even with his collaborators, even with Jean-Claude Carrière, who he wrote so many films with, they're so purely from his, his imagination and they work. There are certain kind of movies where you can't really understand how they function. The artist has such a strong hand, he can take us anywhere he wants. Um, let's see what's next. Class to Risk, this is a, a Claude Sauté. A Claude Sauté sort of crime noir, which is not really how we think of him from his later work, but it's a very good one. Well, that, that well, well, on Corinne d'Hiver I saw in the cinema. It came out in America. But the, his other films I saw in the course of time, Max et les Ferrailleurs, you know that one? Yeah. yeah, that's a great one, which was not very readily available subtitled um, until quite recently. So you watch it in French? Uh, I, I, I watched it in French and then I, now I've seen it in English. And um, we've got a Renoir here. You know, this is a fairly early Renoir, but fully formed. He's uh, c completely in command of what he's doing and it's uh, and there are, there are scenes with large numbers of people all at once and an overlapping and uh, complicated blocking and it's just so natural and full of life and also it sort of has his credo that is uh, everyone has his reasons you know even the villain of the story is very charming and very interesting and everyone sort of gets their place in it it's a top level Renoir it's not it's that it's my favorite Renoir but it's as good as my favorite Renoirs it's, it goes in the same category as uh, as Grand Illusion rules of the game you know I love Tony also that's another one do people pick that one sometimes no, no they don't pick Tony good let's see uh, oh, there's a Truffaut, um, The Man Who Loved Women. This is interesting because this is a sort of later period Truffaut, mm -hmm. and it's almost like Truffaut um, writing a little novel. I mean, it has a, first of all, he's a writer. He, I mean, he's writing the story as he goes. Truffaut loves books. His movies are filled with books. They're filled with words. Um, and um, in a different way from Godard's movies are filled with people actually reading the books to us or j words, big words across the screen and Truffaut has his own approach but it's, it's equally as almost fetishistic about words and books. Then this one is fetishistic in other ways as well. But this is a very, uh, very, I mean, extremely personal, I think. And I think it's a very charming movie and a very good one.